Okay, so um, I've been working on my high power uh, two transistor oscillator for uh, some of my mad science experiments. As I mentioned before, um, when I'm generating certain non conventional conventional fields, um, it will interfere with low power electronics. So I'm trying to build a high power oscillator. Plus, they're simple to design and uh, they're pretty cool in themselves. But uh, sometimes they don't oscillate over the full region, or sometimes they do some weirdness because you're actually uh, trying to make it unstable and uh, make a tunable circuit and so on. And um, I was modeling the output as a, just a simple resistor, but actually it is a transformer, right? We have a transformer that I showed how to uh, wind and build four windings, one to one. And um, so how do we model that transformer? I'd like to have a more complicated model because there's actually some weirdness going on. It's actually tuning backwards. When I tune the resistor almost to zero, or the variable potentiometer almost zero, it goes to the lowest frequency. And when I turn it up very high, uh, high resi resistance, it will go to really high frequency, which is the opposite, the way it should tune according to my circuit models. And uh, if I use different capacitors, I don't know if it has different cues, it, it may not oscillate over certain regions. Some, some regions it won't oscillate at all. And so I, I'd like to get a better model. And here's a simple model using an uh, ideal transformer and then some uh, inductors and resistors to make it non-ideal. <clears throat> and uh, of course we can get rid of the one the one transformer and we would just have something like a shunt inductor and a uh, series inductor and I, I don't think I'm going to try to model the resistors right now but I think I'm going to try to use this model I remember I worked with a German scientist at work who's very very smart and he was talking about using this model so I tried to figure out where I could find it and I think I found it here on the web uh, at this website here and um, so anyway, let's see, oh. looks like we can put the inductors both on the same side. So now we have a very simple model where we can, if we want to measure uh, what, what these values are for this inductance, we can measure, we can put an um, impedance measuring device, a reactance measuring device on this side and measure an open circuit so there's no current flowing through these and that will get a, give us the measurement of this and then we can short this and that will put these in parallel with that and we can get a measurement of those two in parallel and of course if you have two measurements and you have basically two components because we'll lump these together these two reactances then um, we can get a measurement of both inductors and we can put that into our model in our circuit simulator and try to simulate that and see if see how our device behaves maybe we can get a better model of our uh, crazy oscillator we're trying to design okay should be very interesting oh and of course here we do our they lump the elements together so we have our shunt inductor and we have our series inductor and again we can put an impedance measuring device on this side measure it open circuit and we'll get the value of that guy measure it shorted we'll short this together and then these two will be in parallel with each other All right, if you short that then uh, we'll get the measurement of those two in parallel and we can do some calculations and figure out what the value of both of those inductances are and we can put that into our model maybe our piece spice model and see if uh, we can get uh, results that are more consistent with what we're seeing in the oscillator should be interesting, huh? Okay, so we have our LRC, Universal LRC meter by uh, BK Precision. I'll probably put a link to that if you're interested in getting one of these. I've been using this quite a bit for designing my circuits. It's very nice. And um, I disconnected my transformer from this circuit so it doesn't have any parasitic uh, resistances or other things going on there. And um, so here's our transformer, and uh, I have two of the leads. I'm going to actually hook them up here. Let's do this. I'm going to hook that lead up, 
and we'll see what the resistance or the uh, inductance is open circuit. So here's our open circuit inductance, 580 microhenries. Okay. And um, <clears throat> see, we, I have uh, these two clip leads are to short it out on a different winding. So I'm going to short uh, one of the other windings out. And uh, let me. There we go. Clip those clip leads together. And so now it is about 60, almost 64 microhenries with it shorted. So using those two um, measurements, we should be able to make a transformer model. Just out of curiosity, I guess I could measure, since I'm at it, the resistance. Okay, so it looks like shorted. That's interesting. The resistance is similar to what we're trying to drive. Because remember, our speaker is about um, 6 ohms. And the transformer shorted is about 6 ohms. Now let's just make this open circuit again and we'll see what the impedance is. Okay, so open circuit it is, and remember this being measured at a kilohertz, is about 8.3 ohms. So just in case we want to make our model more complicated and put resistors in there too. Although, I'm not sure how accurate this is going to measure the resistance if it's in parallel with the inductors, but maybe it will. Okay, so we can try putting that into our circuit model and uh, see if we get some kind of different results. Should be interesting, huh? Anyway, very cool. Designing high power oscillating circuits. Okay, so let's do some calculations. Remember our L1 inductor was 580, that was open circuit, so that would be without the second inductor, right, because that second inductor is in this top branch up here. And then when we short it, both of the inductors will be in parallel. So we'll use this equation, it's similar to, you know, resistors in parallel. 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 equals 1 over L total. So we've measured L total. And we've measured one of the inductors when it was open circuit, so we need to find the other one. So let's solve for L2. So L2 is equal to 1 over L total minus 1 over L1. And so we'll get an equation that looks like this, and we plug in the numbers. And according to my calculations, L2 should be about 72 microhenries. So remember, so our circuit's going to look like this. Okay. This will be our output, and this is L2, 72, and L1. Okay, so when we do our final circuit model, uh, remember this one's actually going to be the output, 72. L2 is the output of our transformer model. And remember we measured L1 to be 580 microhenries. So this shunt inductor is going to be 580 microhenries, and our output will be 72 microhenries. And that will be our transformer model that we can use, simple transformer model, just modeling it with two inductors. Okay, 580 in uh, shunt and 72 microhenries in out, uh, per, uh, series output. Okay. okay, so now we've included, this is our output, 580 microhenries in shunt, and the output in 72 microhenries. Uh, in a series output, and then I put our load here as I didn't model the inductance of our speaker. Our speaker's over here, right? But um, I just put the resistance as a first order calculation, so I might have to go back and put the inductance in also. But so here's our two outputs, and I'm modeling that as 6 ohms, and here's our simulation. It looks like it's oscillating, and uh, ooh. It's oscillating at a very high frequency. Let me uh, do, let's see, view FFT. Okay. And so there we go. Let's zoom in on the main peak here. 
which is around 100 kilohertz, which I think is pretty close to what I was getting uh, when I was putting 200 ohms in there. So let me um, put, remember our tuning resistors here, so I had 200 ohms and I could add up to 10k and, and here, remember there's a dual tu tuning, you need to change both of these resistors to tune it. And so let me try increasing that and see if the frequency actually goes down like I'm observing on my crazy circuit here. Now that I put the uh, transformer in there, it's tuning the opposite way, which is really annoying me. But if I get a good model, I can uh, model what's going on maybe and uh, uh, get a good circuit design. Okay. Okay, so there's still something goofy about the simulation, but um, so I tried increasing the resistance. I remember if we just had a, a resistive load output, if you increase the resistance, it will charge the capacitor more slowly. So it should uh, os oscillate more slowly. And I, I think, uh, well, when I did that, it went into a goofy mode, and I wasn't able to get it to oscillate the same way using higher resistance. So I changed it to a lower resistance and lo and behold it looks like it's a lower frequency now let me let me just check this so it's got some kind of different oscillation mode okay let's view FFT okay so I believe yeah because I believe it was closer to 100 kilohertz before and now it's 70 kilohertz so lower resistance made it oscillate at a lower frequency. So it's oscillating in a different type of mode than uh, when I modeled it with just a pure resistance. And here, just to show you, let me let me bring this up to 400 ohms. I take both of these up to 400 ohms, and okay. So when I do that. It oscillates in some kind of weird mode where it's... Let me just look at both of these. Hmm. Okay, so there we go. That's not, not, not really a good mode to oscillate in because it's not really symmetric. Just one side's kind of pulsating sporadically. And I think I've seen it oscillate in different modes when I change the resistance or it'll stop oscillating over certain regimes and so I might have to investigate this circuit a little bit more maybe I have to include the actual inductance in here but um, I think this is what's going on with it. my circuit here is that we need to have a more accurate model of the transformer in order to get it to oscillate properly and I'll put it back to 200 because that was oscillating somewhat normally and I'll fiddle around with this circuit some more. I'll re-simulate that. Okay, there we go. Uh, there's the oscillations again. Okay. So anyway, I think we're getting closer to understanding what's going on with our circuit over here. And soon we'll be able to build a high power oscillator in the audio regime, tunable high power oscillator. With, remember, I do dual potentiometer, so I'm tuning both both resistances, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Should be interesting. Anyway, I think I clicked on the wrong resistor before. We want the output resistor, six ohm and six ohms, and so when we look at the two different resistors, they are definitely out of phase, oscillating completely out of phase, just like what we want them to do to drive that transformer. Okay, so it looks like uh, the circuit's oscillating, kind of what we're observing, uh, but we're going to need a little bit more analysis of this. Anyway, very interesting, huh? And again, here's our simple transformer model for the output. Oh, let me get this out of the way. Okay. Okay, so we have our speaker hooked up here, just to test the uh, inductance. See what the inductance is. And, uh, what happened? Our clip leak came off, of course. Okay. 
you can hear the thing beeping because it's running a kilohertz signal into it to measure it. It looks like we're at 57 microhenries. 58 microhenries. This the micro. Okay. We can try putting that in a model and see if that uh, gives us a more accurate result. Okay, so again, I've been playing with the resistor values and the um, capacitor values of our circuit. And um, I did find two different modes of oscillation. There's the high frequency mode, which I can tune, which is continuous wave. And then uh, when I go all the way to the other regime, it has this burst mode where it oscillates and bursts and then shuts off. Let's see if I can get that. So it's a series of bursts, <clears throat> just as the uh, simulation pre had predicted. Let's look at the simulation again. Remember, this is the high frequency. We've lowered the resistance, and it goes up to <clears throat> a lower frequency, but then it'll run in a burst mode. Let me, let me um, change these values to... I think it was like about 400 or something, it would start running in this burst mode. Try that. Okay, simulate run. See, there we go. So it's a burst mode of oscillations, very similar to what we're seeing here at the, the high resistance. So it looks like our model is uh, predicting what will happen in the circuit in a qualitative manner. I may not have all the the uh, values completely right, or maybe there's some more components required, but see how it's operating in a low frequency burst mode, which is exactly what we're seeing here when we turn the uh, potentiometer all the way up to the high, high point. And then, of course, when we lower it again, it becomes a continuous wave at a very high frequency. Okay, and that's kind of where I want to have it operate as a continuous wave. So I'm still trying to understand this circuit because it behaves very differently when you have all uh, these transformer here and inductive load. I put an inductive load into here. Now let me turn this thing off. This is really annoying. Okay, so at least we can predict the oscillations with our circuit simulator, but I'm still. Um, still uh, struggling with uh, understanding how this circuit works. Anyway, very interesting though, huh?